morning and welcome to another episode of Business Beat with Mio Odette. Influencer marketing has gained a unique position in the global branding space. Who is selling the product is often as important as what you're selling. So how do you use your position as an influencer to springboard or build a brand into something amazing? To find out more, I'm joined by leading influencer, Kim Jade. Good morning, Kim. Queen Odette, thank you for <laughs> having me. It's an honor. Welcome to Business Beat. Thank you. So we're talking influencer marketing. Yes. And who better to give us a bit of insight on influencer marketing than influencer extraordinaire herself, I right? will take it. Thank you. <laughs> what is your perspective on influencer marketing? For sure. I mean, this, this term influencer marketing, even the term influencer is very um, recent in our industry. Um, more so in America, it's been mm -hmm. around for a while, but I would say the last five to eight years here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And basically what they're doing is they're taking people with influence, right. people that are big following, celebrities, athletes, um, bloggers, and using them to push a product. Mm -hmm. And so if you are telling me, Kim, I found this amazing lipstick, it's the perfect shade of red, you have to try it. Mm -hmm. I'm more likely to trust you than I am to trust some supermodel overseas who I know is being paid to right. endorse the product and talk about it. So, so that was, that's basically the logic behind using influencers. And it's all good until it's not, right? Yes. We just need to look to history to see how influencer marketing or brand endorsements went completely wrong. Mm. Tiger Woods, when he went through a bit of a speed wobble in his personal life, yeah. how that impacted all his sponsorships yep. and how brands pulled away from him. Oscar Pistori is the same thing. Yep. How does a brand mitigate against the risk of being tainted by the behavior of the influencer? For sure. I mean, look, the thing is, is tricky because for, since, the, since the beginning of time when you've had rock and roll stars and athletes and golfers and things like that, they could get away with being naughty because there wasn't this thing of instant posting. Yes. Nowadays, everybody has a phone to capture anything that happens yes. and they can post it and it can go viral instantly. And just as quickly, your brand and your influencer can completely ruin their reputation, right? So how do you be careful as a brand when working with an influencer, celebrity or athlete? I think you, all you have to do is look at their track record. Mm -hmm. What a lot of brands do before they even approach me, for example, is they'll go through your whole Twitter history. Right. They go through, see what every tweet, they go through every Insta post, Google, is there anything controversial that could be attached to this woman that could be repeated, mm -hmm. you know? So brands are smart. They're doing their homework. I mean, you, all you have to do is look at the most recent Miss Essay search. Mm -hmm. When all these girls were announced, Twitter went in and black Twitter is a big thing in yes, South Africa. Yes. So all these people, complete strangers on Twitter, went through the Miss South Africa um, entry um, ladies that had entered went through their Twitter history and found things from like eight years ago, like when they were 15, they were oh, saying wow. things. And because of that, these girls were forced to drop out of Miss Essay. How difficult is it to be an influencer? Because I recently stumbled across a little girl, um, Taylor from <coughs> Durban, who is, um, I think her handle is Taylor's Terrible Twos. Twos. Yes. yes. And I watched a makeup tutorial <laughs> by this toddler. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I saw this natural endorser come mm -hmm. out of her. I mean, you can't be taught that, right? Yeah. So she talks about a shout out to the brand. And yeah. She holds the product. The product. And she talks about, <laughs> guys, if you didn't get that product name, mm -hmm. just go back, right. screen grab, and you can find the product in a certain store. Now, for me, I'm thinking, well, if a toddler can do it, can anybody do it? Look, I mean, it's a tricky question. Yeah. I have two thoughts about, about Taylor. I think yeah. she's absolutely incredible and so talented and so young and beautiful and clearly is natural, has a natural on camera, right? But at the same time, what are you exposing your child to from a really young age by mm. being on the internet with all these people that are out there? Um, in the same breath, Taylor's probably going to be paying for her own education. So. This is true. <laughs> her this parents is have true. been smart and monetizing this on her natural true. talent. I think that there could be appropriate brand fits, you know, stuff that's appropriate for a mm. child. Um, because who better than a child to convince other kiddies to use something, yeah. buy something, get something. But like you say, I think it is a bit of a double-edged sword. Yeah. 
Look, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. The thing is, you do have to be natural at it, but also it is an, a big investment in your time and in your money, in the quality of the product and the, the content that you're putting out. It's mm -hmm. all about content. You know, mm -hmm. they say content is king. Absolutely. Um, be I it agree. on YouTube or yes. Twitter or Instagram, you have to make a conscious effort to what you put out every single it's day. It's a full-time job. It really is a full-time job. And the thing is, I never went into it wanting to be an influencer. Mm -hmm. I was a model and I created my blog because I actually didn't have money. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to share with people how you can look cute and fashionable mm -hmm. on a budget. You also have a full-on education. Yes, I have my honours degree in social work and psychology. I'm a registered social worker in this country. Well, this is fantastic. Thanks. Because what you're actually telling me is that for your own brand, right, mm -hmm. you had to put the foundation in place, yes. which is through education, get to know the do's and don'ts. Yes. And then you started using your talents to monetize it. For sure. To pay for your, your life, for sure. right, and your lifestyle. Yes. And you are evolving into a, somewhat of a brand yourself, making some changes. Talk to us about that. Well, when I went from being a model to being on TV, I was on MTV Africa and MTV mm -hmm. Base for three years. Mm -hmm. That's when my following jumped and I realized I could monetize my social media. Right. And from being on camera and learning the industry, I realized there was so much more that I wanted to contribute. You know, it's a lot of our production houses is the same thing. You walk mm -hmm. in and it's mostly predominantly a room full of men, yes. very few women of color, yes, very true. few young people. And I, as a young person that had gained an amount of experience and knowledge and sitting in the boardrooms listening, what are they talking about in these, mm -hmm. you know, what do the brands want? What do events want? What do, the, you know, your viewers want? I realized I could do it on my own. And so I started, I registered my own production house in November 2019. Yes. Wow. And um, since then, yeah, I've been, <laughs> since then I've been um, running brand campaigns and awesome. doing a local travel campaign. We've created two online shows. One is about sneakers and sneaker culture. Oh, I see One that. Is, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One is called Global Zimbabweans, where we're taking mm -hmm. advantage of Zoom calls and interviewing okay. people all around the world. So, yeah, there's a lot you can do with, uh, collaborating with the right creatives around you that have the same dream and vision. Would you say that there is a lifespan for, in, for influencers? I think a lot of really successful people will get to a point where they're like, why am I making money for someone else? Why am right. I building their brand, their company, their, you know, this, when I have the skills and following in order to do it myself? Mm -hmm. And so like you see with the Kardashians, um, like you see with Kanye, Kanye first worked with Nike and then Adidas on sneakers. And mm -hmm. he saw his sneakers would sell out in crazy, crazy time. He's like, actually, I'm going to create my own brand called Yeezy. Mm -hmm. Kim Kardashian went on to Kim Kardashian West. Chloe did um, Good American. Mm -hmm. They realized that, why am I making money for all these other people when, when I they can could do, do it, it for, for myself? Right? Yes. And I so... talk about entrepreneurship being the future. Yes. You know, the, it's no secret. We speak about this almost every week on Business Beat, that the unemployment rate is too high for corporate South Africa to absorb all the unemployed yeah. people. Yes. People have to embrace opportunities and go for it and make a go of it mm. using their talents, using their experiences and using opportunities that are right in front of them. For sure. You know? I think I did, that's a scary thing for young people is like, I never studied it. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what, where to start. And the truth is, I'm exactly the same. Mm -hmm. I never studied business. I never studied accounting. And now I run my own business and I have to learn these things. But the great thing is, if you're smart enough to reach out and ask for help for people in your industry, even your family members that know what they're doing, they'll help you and you'll learn along the way. Wow. So don't ever That's let awesome. that hold you back mm -hmm. from, because now I'm, now I'm doing budgets. Now <laughs> we're talking about finance and I, I'm learning these things, contracts, mm -hmm. because I have to. Absolutely. You know? And I think it's a very empowering space to be in and I hope more young people feel brave enough to take that step. You are so inspiring. And I think that young people have so much that they can learn mm, from you. But you. I think that entrepreneurs, also have a lot that they can learn from you. you. You epitomize evolution, keeping yourself relevant, branding, building a brand. And oh, I wish you every success with all of your adventures, all of your ventures, and all of your business activities that you embark upon in the future. Um, 2020 has definitely been a difficult year for a lot of us. Mm. And when I open my social media and I see you living your best life, <laughs> but knowing that it's not about Living your best life, it's the hustle. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's the hustle. I get it. You. you inspire me every day to keep on keeping on hustling. Oh, thank you so thank much you. for being on the show. I absolutely love chatting to you, and we can chat forever. Yes, we can. I wish. <laughs> thank um, you so much for I having me. I hope that we can catch up again soon. 
And I definitely want to see what uh, your production company is all about in the not too distant future. Thank you so much. To the viewers, there you have it. From a young girl who comes from humble beginnings, who needed an education, who needed to fund her lifestyle, to a model, to an influencer, to a blogger, to a TV presenter, and now an entrepreneur. Kim epitomizes the hustle, the determination, the passion, and the, the will to be better every day. If she can do it, we can too. Until next week.